What's up guys, welcome back and in this video I'd like to start building out this book recommendation site in GraphQL. If you haven't seen the last video, we took a look at using GraphQL with both Laravel and Vue and the tools available to us. In this video, I'd like to start building out this app and we're going to start with the backend using Laravel. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a new Laravel app. So I'm going to do Laravel new, let's call it Books QL Laravel. And then the front end will be called Books QL View. All right, let's open that up. And let's open it up in code. So let me just set up my database. I already have a database made. So it's called Books QL. Laravel and it's root root. Okay, so we need to start by making our models and our mi migrations. So again, if you look at the design, we only have two models and one relationship between them. We have categories and we have books and the relationship is a category has many books and a book belongs to one category. So realistically, you probably want to have a book to belong to many categories, but I'm just trying to make this as simple as possible. So we're just going to have the belongs to one category relationship. So let's make our models. Let's start with the category. Make model category and dash A will create a migration and a controller, which we don't need, but let's create it anyways, and a factory. Let's do the same for the book. So let's open that up and let's set the relationships. So let's start with category. And I'm gonna set the guarded to an empty array, just cause I'm gonna make a cedar later on and let's set the relationship. So a category has many books. So I guess my snippets don't work anymore. Okay. Books and let's do return. This has many book class. Okay. And let's do the same for the book. So I'm going to do guarded as well. And I'm going to do a this belongs to category class. Okay. Now let's set up the migrations and on all the fields on the book. So create books table. And I am just going to paste this in to save some time. And then I will go through each of the fields. So uh, the title, obviously the author. So the image is going to be a string and it can be empty. The description is just a longer form text. The link is a string. Uh, this featured flag is because in the design, I have a featured category here. Uh, maybe I'll design a different too. Maybe I'll have a hero that displays some featured books. Anyways, that's the idea. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that, but there is a featured Boolean column there. So this is the relationship with category. So a book belongs to a category. So we need a category ID and that is a foreign key on the categories table. And that's it. So let's do the same for create categories table. And this only has one field and it's just the name of the category. Okay, so let's see if we can migrate this. 
Okay, so that works. So now I want to make a cedar just so I have realistic data. And the data I have in my cedar are all of these books here I have in the design. Maybe I'll add more later on, but there is about this many. And I didn't make it very, reali very realistic in terms of the categories. I just dumped like the first six in the first category, then the next six in the next category, then the next three in the next category, just so uh, every category has at least a few books. So let's make a cedar. Let's start with the categories. So PHP artisan make seed categories table cedar. Oops, why is there a dash there? Okay, and let's also do one for books. And let's go into our seeds database table seeder and let's just do start with the categories and let's do the books after that. And obviously I'm not gonna make you watch me do this. I'm just gonna paste in what I have here in my other project. So this is the books table seeder. So a whole bunch of books. And I'm gonna paste in the categories table seeder. And this is just a few categories. Okay, so I have these categories and all of these books over here. Cool, so now let's try to migrate fresh. Where's migrate? Fresh, and it's also seed, dash dash seed. And that looks good. Let's see if we have data. So books, cool, a bunch of books and some categories here, cool. Okay, so you see I also have uh, the cover images here. So I'm just gonna put these in. So this is the project I already did. And I already have the cover images here. So I'm gonna put these in the public folder. We're not gonna use it in this video, but we're gonna need it eventually when we make use of the cover images. So I'm just gonna put it in an image folder and it's gonna paste them in. I guess I can't paste. Can I paste? Okay, so they're all in here now. Cool. Okay, now we can start using the Lighthouse package. So let's go ahead and install that. Um, installation, Composer require. Let's do that. Okay, next is this publishes the default schema.graphql file, which we can make use of, and then we can modify it later on. So let's do that. Okay, and I'm not gonna use this DevTools, I'm just gonna use the one on my desktop, so it's GraphQL Playground. and we'll use that when we need to use it. And I also want the config. Where's that? We have to publish the config as well. Okay, so that. Okay, and that is published, cool. Okay, so now back to our code. And the first thing we need to do is Let's go into our schema GraphQL. So that's in routes, GraphQL schema. And you can see we have some boilerplate here, which we can use, well, not use, we'll model our models after it. So first thing I wanna do is define our types. So we'll, like I said, we're not gonna have users in this app, just to keep things simple. So, Let's define our types. We'll leave it in there for now. 
we'll leave the user in there for now. So the first thing we have is a book. And this is just the field we defined in the migration. So create book. So all of this stuff, but in GraphQL format. So we have the ID. And this is of type ID. And ID is a field type in GraphQL. And it's required. Title is a string, it's required. Author string required image string not required link string not required description string not required featured boolean not required and a book belongs to a category so we have to specify the relationship here. And it is a category and we'll define that right after this. And it is a belongs to relationship. Okay. So that is our book type. And then the next type is category. And let's do the same thing. ID is ID required name string required. And it's set up the relationship books is an array of books. That's what it returns. And the relationship is has many. And that is it for our types. So now let's start defining the queries and the mutations. So um, let's look at our design to see how the app's supposed to work. So the default view although this doesn't represent that. I just want to show all the books. Um, no pagination, because that just, I mean, in a real app, you would have pagination, but again, it's trying to make this as simple as possible. You can see that the example here uses paginate and we won't be using paginate. Anyway, so we just want all the books. So that's the most basic query we can do. So let's just do books. And that's going to return a book array. And that's required. Actually, it's not required because it can be null. And we're just going to use the all directive and that will return all books. So let's go ahead and try this out in our GraphQL playground. So it's books QL dash Laravel. Books QL dash Laravel test slash GraphQL. Okay. And what is it again? It's books. So query, make this bigger. That'd be enough. One more. So query, um, books. And let's return the title. There you go. Book was not found. Okay, so in the config, so if you go to Lighthouse config, it's in config Lighthouse, there is an option here that says where the models are supposed to be. I'm not sure why they defaulted to app models because the default functionality for Laravel is it just goes into the app folder. So if we do that, that should fix that error. Let's try again, refresh it first, let's try again, there we go. And we can do whatever we like here, ID, uh, what else, uh, author, cool. So what else do we need for our app to work? We also need to be able to get the details for one book. So for this view, we need to make another request when we click on one and it goes here. So let's do that. And let's go to, and we'll just copy this. And we'll just change it. So this will be book, just one book. And the parameter is 
the book ID. Um, later on, maybe we can change this to a slug. That would be more URL friendly and more SEO friendly. And it's going to return one book. And we want to find that book based on the ID that's passed in. So um, you can specify the model, but I don't think we have to. And let's go ahead and try that. So let me just query book. Oh, let me refresh book. There we go. We need an ID, just pass in one. And we can do the same thing ID, title, author. Cool. And if we want the category for this book, since there's a relationship, we can already, we can do that as well. So we just go category. And then what's the types here? We can just get the name. So there you go. This book by this author is in this category. Okay, so let's go ahead and define the endpoints for categories as well. So let's do that. So it's basically just this, but for categories. So this will be categories. This will be an array of categories and all. And this will be a category. And we'll take an ID as well. And this will be a category. Okay. Let's try that out. These, this should work as well. But for a category, let me refresh real quick. And this should be a category. And obviously a category doesn't have this. It has a name. Cool. And we can also do uh, categories. And name. Cool. So that's all the categories. So back to our app. We want to be able to click the category and just have it filter by those books. So that's already built in since we have that relationship defined. So say, for example, we wanted everything in marketing category. So marketing is ID one, I think. Okay, it is. So let's get the category first. So category ID one. And because we have that relationship defined right here in the type, the category, I mean, then we can get the books for this category. And that's exactly what we need in our app. So let's just do uh, books and we can specify the fields we want. So in our case, what do we want? We're going to want the name the author, the cover, or I think I named the image and the ID, because we're going to click on that and we want it to go to a different route. Okay. So ID, uh, title, author, and this thing I call the image. So there you go. We have all this information that we need, which we can use on our front end when we start working on our front end. Um, what else? So like I said, we also have this featured uh, category, which is not really a category. It's just an extra field on the model. So how do we filter by just books that are featured? So let's add one more here to books. Let's call it books by featured. So like I said in the first video, if you don't like directives, you can just use custom resolvers. But if you want to make use of directives, you can do it like this. So featured is a Boolean and it's required. 
and we want to use the EQ directive. And this is going to return an array of books and it can be empty. So let's not put the exclamation mark and let's grab all. So all the books that are featured based on this parameter coming in. So right now, none are featured. So this should return an empty array of books. So let's see if that happens. Uh, what did I name it? Books by featured. Let me refresh this. Books by featured. And then let's grab the title. It should be empty. Oh, sorry. I need the featured is true. So it should be empty because none of them are featured. Cool. And if I say false, this should be all of the books. Okay. So if I add one, if I manually set one to featured or a few of them, let's go to books. Let's say this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And save that. Let's go back here. And this should now have a few of them. Cool. And again, I did this in the last video and I just mentioned it, but if you have some complex query that directives can't handle, or if you just don't like directives, you can use custom resolvers. So let's say some complex query search is the parameter and it's a string and it returns an array of books. And we can just use the command line. Uh, I forgot what it's called. It's called Lighthouse Query, I think. Yep. So PHP Artisan Lighthouse Query. And let's name it Some Complex Query. So it has to be the same name as this. And obviously, you don't use directives here because the class will handle that. Okay. So that goes into, I think, app, HTTP, GraphQL, some complex query. So here is where the logic goes. So you can do whatever you like in here, some complex query. But since I, I named the parameters parameter search, let's do a basic search here. You can do this with directives as well, but let's just do this return book where say app book author. So this is going to do a search for the author like and let's do this. So I just want to search on the argument that's passed in. So I'm going to do some wild cards here. And to pass in the argument, just do args and the name of the argument. So we named it search in our GraphQL schema. So we can use that and just add another percent here. So it does a wildcard search. And let's just make sure to get it. And this should be a search now. So let's try it. I'm going to refresh. And I'm going to do um, some complex query, which is actually a search. Search by Gary. I have two books in there by Gary V. And let's grab the title. And obviously the author is the same. So title and author. And let's try that. App book not found. Slash app slash book. Refresh. Try again. There we go. So there's that custom, some complex query, which is actually just a search, but we're using custom resolvers. Okay, so now let's do some mutations. 
uh, we obviously want to be able to create, update, and delete our models. So let's do that. So back to our schema. Right here. So there's already an example for creating, updating, and deleting users. And we can make use of this for our models. So let's start with creating. So I'm just going to copy this. And let's start with categories. So let's rename this to create category. And we only need a name for category. So I can erase this. So it's going to be a string. It's going to be required. And I also want it to be unique. So let's say unique. We can use Laravel's rule, rules. Unique on categories table and unique on the name column. So that should do the trick. Make sure to change this. We can take this model out. This should be create, this should be category. And let's do the same for update and delete. And then we can test it out after. Let's put a space here. So update category. So it's required. The ID is required and it's just a name. And it is the same rules as this. And we don't need this. This is a category. And the same for delete. Required category, delete, delete the model. Okay, so let's try, let's try creating one, updating one, and then deleting one. And then we'll do the same for books. Actually, it's the same process for books. It's just more fields. I'll do that behind the scenes and then I'll show it to you guys working. So let's try, let me just put it here in the middle so it's easier to see. So it is, let me just delete this. It's a mutation. Um, we're going to do create category. Let me refresh. Create category. And if you need a name, say new category. And then we just want the ID. And just to say the name. Okay, so that created a new one called new category. So if you check the database, there it is right there. Cool. And what's next? Update category. So let's change that to update. And the parameter is the ID. So it's seven. I think it's the ID. Yep, seven. So let's say seven. And we also need the name we want to change it to. So new category update. And let's try, see if that works. And it did. Let's check the database. There we go. Cool. And let's delete the category. So delete. It just needs the ID, I think. Cool. And we can return that. So if you read the error message, it says the ID should be non-null. So the ID should be non-null. Cool. Let's try it again. Refresh. Try again. There we go. Seven should be gone now. There we go. Awesome. So yeah, I'm going to do the books behind the scenes. It's basically the same thing. It's just more fields. And then I'll show it to you guys when I'm done. Okay, so I added mutations for creating, updating, and deleting books. So let me just show you that it works. So let's try this one first. Create book, a new book, 
and I'm just hard coding the category in here and returning the ID and title. Okay, so that's ID 26. See if that is in the database. So there it is right there, cool. Uh, so let's update it. So the next one is update. Uh, so let's change it to 26. A new book changed, some author changed. Okay, let's run that. Okay, check the database. There you go, cool. And let's delete the book. So mutation, delete book, 26. And that should delete it. And it's gone, cool. So yeah, I think that's all the operations we need on the back end. Um, we might tweak things while we work on the front end and realize we, we missed something, but I think that is all. We have all the CRUD operations for both our models, and we tested both, and everything looks like it's working. In the next video, we'll start working on the front end and interacting with our back end GraphQL implementation. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Okay, thanks. Bye.